Y'all have heard of dark academia. What about bright chaotic academia? What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today we're gonna be playing with the new Natasha Denona collection that's not even really that new anymore. I've seen reviews from tons of people that I follow on it already. I mean, I've seen them come up, but it's my turn. This is the first eyeshadow palette that I bought from Natasha Denona, I think since like 2018. 2018, I bought like every single one that came out because Tati said that they were the bee's knees and I was like, well, this is the formula by which all other formulas shall be measured because I was just like, I guess that opened to influence. And it just didn't occur to me that I didn't like them. I was like, I'm terrible at doing eye makeup. I'm obviously really bad at eyeshadow. I can't make these work. They really humbled me because the formulas are a advanced, I would say. But other than that, the color stories at the time, like I didn't realize the color stories didn't speak to me all that much. But now she has come out with this collection. This is called the My Dream Collection. And it is the My Dream Palette. There's a little My Dream Blush. And then there are three lip products. Two were sold out by the time I ordered, which is fine because I got the lip gloss, which is really what I wanted anyway. But this was the main objective to me. First of all, these colors are my colors. At face value, some of them, if you were to like pop the pans out, you might like look at each one individually and say, oh, well, that's brown or that's peach or that's pink or whatever. But when they're all together like this, you notice that like the nuances of them really fit together and the undertones have a commonality in them that's all a little bit muted, muted with purple. The other thing that occurred to me as I was deliberating about whether to buy this, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was like, I'd be interested to see how it compares to the Divine Rose palette, Divine Rose 1 from Pat McGrath. And I was like, that is one of my favorite palettes, if not my favorite palette. And I would be interested to see as well. So I ordered it. It was $65 because this is one of her midi palettes. And I have had a chance to dip into most of the shades in here, like the, the most exciting ones and also like all the medium tones, maybe like the darkest, the blackest black as she calls it. I haven't had a chance to touch into that yet, but I feel like I really have my head around this. I also got the, like I said, the blush and highlight palette and the lip gloss. So those are what we're going to be putting on today and I will give you guys the lowdown on everything before the end of the video, the prices and stuff, and then I'll give you all my final thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and jump in. So all of the packaging on the compacts looks like this, peachy beige color with this black splatter on it and it's sort of a satin feeling plastic, kind of feels like it's almost rubberized, but not quite. So. The first thing that I'm going to do so as not to waste your time is to do my typical zoom through, except it's going to be of my complexion until I get to blush. So let's just do that. <laughs> the daylights is A, because I want these powder products to go on evenly, but B, I'm wearing a white collared shirt and I just don't want cream makeup going everywhere. It already is, so. I know that that gives y'all anxiety. It gives me a bit of anxiety too, but it is what it is. So, beginning with the My Dream Cheek Trio. This happened. It arrived broken, which is, you know, obviously not ideal, especially because the center pan is cream, but I just keep pressing her in there. Seems fine. Do I think that this is like the most ideal use of space? Not really. Like, I don't know why I expected there to be more of like a, I don't know, multi-tonal blush thing going on here. I just sort of, you know, saw this shade and was like, ooh, we're sharing a brainwave. <laughs> she must like the same things that I like. And so I got it, but like, yeah, this center one is like a cream base. Okay. 
And then we have this very nice highlighter, which did save me from having to buy her other highlighter because I did used to really like it and I was planning on buying it, but I was like, oh cool, now I have, now I have one of her highlighters. And that's the blush and that is <laughs> what blush dreams are made of when you're complected like me because it goes to just a really pleasant kind of like nudie pink for me. So that is why it initially appealed to me and that part does actually bear out. So I am actually gonna be able to buff this, I think, because I powdered the daylights out of my face. Eh, maybe not, maybe not. We'll start, we'll start by pity patting here. I am gonna be able to use Natasha Denona products elsewhere too. At least I have her contour powder. I don't know what else I have anymore, but I love her contour powder. I bought it at the Sephora sale in like November and I don't think I've put it away since then. It's been top shelf ever since because it's just such a good color and a great formula. So yeah, speaking of great formulas, like I wish that this was just a duo. <laughs> like I wish that they had just left this guy out entirely, but at the same time, I can use it in my eyeshadow because there aren't that many really pale highlighty colors in the eyeshadow palette. And so it's, you know, as a complete thought, maybe it was worth including for that reason, but I wish I had more of this blush or like two shades of this blush would be really cool. Like a deeper one or maybe a fairer one, you know, just more complexity here. Y'all know I do love a good layered blush moment, but this does really do the trick. No bronzer yet or anything. And the one thing that I found was sort of the challenge when you're working with this collection and you're working with all of it at once is actually trying to maintain the neutrality on the entire phase of makeup because it can almost get kind of drab looking. Do you know what I mean? Like it looks almost kind of unnatural if you don't take something and brighten it up or warm it up or something. And so I feel like it does kind of beg for a little bit of that. So that's the color of the blush on its own, just on top of complexion product on me. I think it's awesome. I think the formula is really nice. I'm going to use her little cream base here. And I'm gonna use that to just add a little highlight moment. And it does actually soak in pretty well, even though it's very balmy. But I feel like maybe I just have enough powder on my face that it's doing a pretty good job of soaking in because it kind of goes like less and less and less tacky as I'm tapping my finger on it. And it's not like dragging the makeup around. So that's that. But I'm going to go in on the eyes first before I go with bronzer and everything, just so y'all can see the way that these colors go together. And then I'll show you how I adjust them after the fact. I've done a lot of looks with this and I'm gonna give you all my thesis statement. My imagination runs wild and I have yet to get bored. It's really a fantastic color story for like what it set out to do. She did a phenomenal job with this and it's really exciting for being something that's a pretty tight color story. We have a lot of depth here, which is fantastic. Again, not a lot of super bright lights, which is fine for me. I have those kinds of things in complexion products or in highlighters and things like that. And even though I think Natasha Denona is kind of known for this, right? A lot of times her mattes, especially sort of these like medium ones will look really similar in the paint and she is an appreciator of undertone and nuance and they do all actually serve distinct purposes. What you'll find when you're using a Natasha Denona eyeshadow is that something that looks like this, that looks almost like a dulled peach is actually going to be a lot more vivid once you get it on the skin. Peach, <laughs> it's just more saturated and her pigments are a lot more consistent. I find, you know, she doesn't lean super hard on satins. There's like a couple of satins in here, but it's mostly like these very saturated mattes and these wild kind of like textured shadows. And we have a duochrome in the shade Vision Duo, maybe just multi-chrome that is very reminiscent actually of Utopian Dream from Pat McGrath that just like oil slick shade. And it goes green pink, look at that. Just like what I'm wearing. I didn't do that on purpose. And my thesis question, other than how's it going to compare to Divine Rose One, going into buying this was, have my <laughs> skills come 
a long enough way since 2018 that I feel comfortable using this formula and the answer is yes. Here she is, my 201 from BK. That's what I was looking for. My skills have come a ways. And the one thing that really hasn't changed is that I, don't, I still don't think that this is a beginner friendly formula. It's a pretty difficult formula to get your head around because like the mats are so committed. You have to really know your eye shape and you have to know exactly what you're setting out to do before you leap in. So I'm starting with this shade Nurture and it's just a really beautiful like in between beige color. I don't know where I'm going with this eye look yet. I've been able to achieve my sort of signature bedroom eyes look with this. I've been able to get really bright, like the shade Invention is just insane. It's like this kind of apricot gold. I'll swatch them all in a minute, but we will start here. But also I think that this is a much easier color palette like an actual color story to work with for me because it's very much like right within my comfort zone working with like the safari well safari was all matte but the tropic palette like that one i feel like it was six of one half a dozen of the other right it was like my skills weren't really there but it was also such a disparate color story that I don't know, it's like if you're not super familiar with like what looks good on you and what your tastes are in bright shades, then you could get in over your head pretty quickly. And also her shimmer shades in that Tropic palette specifically were so disappointing. They were really difficult to work with unless you had a wet brush. So that was easy. I made it look easy. Is it easy? Not necessarily. And I also think that I had like pretty bad brushes back when I was doing this. And so it's like, if you don't have, I feel like kind of higher quality brushes, a professional formula like this might not work so well. And that's, you know, m just my opinion, literally, like, I, obviously it's very likely that someone could work with us and be like, this is exactly, you know what I mean? This is super beginner friendly. But for me, I still feel the reminiscent qualities that I felt initially using her formulas of going, yeah, the mattes are sticky. And if it were the wrong color on the wrong skin tone, like in my case, working with like a blue or something, I could get in trouble pretty quickly. <laughs> All that to say though, you know, if you find a Natasha Denona palette that's in a color story that works as well for your skin as I feel like this one does for mine, it could feel like the easiest palette in the world. <laughs> that color is fantastic. <laughs> it looks so native to my skin tone that I feel like I could just get entirely carried away with it. So maybe I'll go with the purples. I think that that's kind of what you have to do in here. So I've already done like the, you know, the bedroom eyes thing and whatnot. Like y'all have seen that before. I would typically go with something like Aspiration and then top it with Serenity. And that's going to give you that just like sleepy, moody, you know, pretty, sexy, sultry brown. But let's try and do that with purple. Let's just try. So I'm going to start actually with, ooh. Whoa, I don't know if I've, I, I don't know if I've ever worn a shadow that color. So let's do that. That's instinct and we will see. We will just see, won't we? I'm gonna do it with my finger cause it's a very like saturated almost to the point of being creamy kind of matte. Yeah, and it's going to go from like fuchsia to virtually like hot pink on me. You see that? Everything turns pink on me. Cool. So I'm already seeing, and I mean, obviously it's not a first impression, but like, especially with this shade, how different this is from Divine Rose. It's so much more saturated, it's much brighter, and I feel like everything just goes a little bit like further, more extreme in the tone values and stuff than Divine Rose. Divine Rose is just a lot less saturated across the board. This also doesn't have, obviously, the Pat McGrath special shades in it. And the more like exciting multi-chromes, I feel like draw from more like the utopian dream. So it's a more exciting version, I feel like, but I of course find Divine Rose one to be very exciting because it's just a lot of fun and it's very like pretty, but this is a little bit more, like you can get something really, really pretty out of it, but you can also get something pretty like wild out of it too. Case in point, what's on my eyeballs right now. Keeping going with that shade, if there is one thing that I had learned back in the day with the Natasha Denona palette, it's like, keep your eye on the ball, keep your head in the game. <laughs> the last thing you wanna do is start trying to go on autopilot because her 
formulas and her shades, like if you start kind of changing your mind halfway in, they will make you look like a fool. I am obsessed with that color. I'm not sure it looks very good on me, but I like the color a lot. Okay, this is the Angie Hot and Flashy A503. And it's just slightly bigger than that A504. And I feel like that it's just, it's like pretty fluffy, but it's not quite as densely packed. I feel like maybe those are exactly the same, the 201 and the 503. I don't think so. No, this one's much looser. And that's what I'm going to apply Aspiration with. So Aspiration is this brown that does have a little tiny bit of coolness to it, like a little bit of plumminess. Like look on the end of the brush. I don't know if you can see that. It's plummy. And I'm applying that right in the crease of my socket. Like I am just leaning hard on my bone structure here. <laughs> Keep me on the rails. Something pretty cool that happened on Friday was Amanda Z came to visit me and she took me to Ulta and she basically just like walked through the drugstore section and she was like, can I just impose like all of my favorites onto you? And I was like, yeah, she's like, I know you're such like a luxury queen. I want to like convince you essentially of my favorite things. And I was like, all right. So she bought me a bunch of her favorite drugstore things and that's going to be a video coming up. It's like Amanda picks my drugstore makeup. I'm using the shade Unity. The first one that I swatched for y'all. It's like peachy. But you see how like, I wasn't, it's not even that I'm not diligent. It's just that you can't be mindless with these shades, those mattes, which I've only worked with the mattes so far in this look, they can make you look a little foolish. They're more of a formula that works while being placed than it does necessarily being like layered when you're buffing. So I'm gonna take more of Aspiration and just kind of doctor that shape with the A504. And what you do get, what the reward is here, is that her matte formula is very like blurring. See, it looks terrible. <laughs> it's pretty actually like hard to manipulate those very dark shades on my skin because it's just so high contrast. And once you pat them on, like they don't go anywhere. It's kind of hard. I'm gonna dip back into Nurture, that initial shade that I did, and just try and like blend and blur that a little. <laughs> you know? It's all matte and mattes can be really scary. So I'm going to now, let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to go babies? Babies will pull it back from the brink. I feel like the one thing that I have not done is the shade Vision. And what I like about this shade is the same thing that I like about the one from Pat McGrath and the Utopian Dream Palette. It's just like, once you put this on, it just makes it just looks cool. It makes you look like you knew what you were doing and I tend to get very carried away with it. So like, could I have done an entire matte eye look with the lighter shades in this palette? Yeah. But an entirely matte look with just the deep shades in this palette? Probably not. I don't have the patience for it. Like, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying I personally don't have the patience for it. All right, I am actually going to dip into the highlight, like I said, in here. And that's what I'm gonna use to highlight around this eye look. Cause there isn't anything really light enough in the palette to do that with. And I'm also using it to kind of blur everything a little bit because we are talking about quite a contrasty eye look, right? I'm also going to grab like a white pencil. This is something that Amanda bought for me. It's a white pencil from NYX. And I'm gonna use that to achieve a really good high contrast inner corner highlight that I feel like can stand up to this look because it's just, it's a lot and it's starting to look a little bit muddy. Okay, I believe that now has come the time to go for like bronzer and things like that. But the last thing that I wanna do before I break again is throw a little bit of this blush shade in my eye look because 
I feel like this is the color that like needs to exist in that palette. It's just that perfect in-between matte, you know? And it makes a little bit of sense of the mud. I'm gonna throw a little bit underneath here too. Okay, I'm gonna do bronzer, brows, come back and do lips because I do have her lip gloss. And then I'm going to, like I'm saving a lot of time in this video so that I can spend more of it comparing the two palettes that I was talking about and also like deep diving on the concept because this is a very concept heavy collection. here is and happy third birthday to the khaki lip liner from Thrive Cosmetics. I don't have the lip liner from this collection because it was sold out so we're gonna do this. And the lip gloss from this collection actually really drew my eye. Like I was actually very pleased. I think if, they, if this had been sold out I wouldn't have bought the collection because this is just such the color, right? It's like a desaturated, slightly lavender leaning, you know, beige color. And it could very much like wash a lot of people's lips out and therefore <laughs> it is my dream color. It has a nice, just sort of sweet smell, a little bit of vanilla. It's very thin in a lovely way. It's not quite a liquid lip balm, but it's almost there. It doesn't have any plumping properties. It doesn't have any bells and whistles or anything like a sensation. It's just a nice lip gloss. Et voila, yikes. I don't know y'all. I don't know if this is the vibe today. Like it is the vibe today, but I'm not sure if it's the vibe, you know? Do you know what I mean? So uh, I am actually going to add a little bit more blush. See if I can get something a little healthier looking at it. Do you see what I mean? How it can kind of start to look a little bit antique you know, like on my cheeks and stuff, like when it's all this color story, and I do love a tonal color story, but it just gets a little bit beige. It needs some warmth, it needs some like happiness to it. I might just go into this here. This is my Kaleidos, I don't even remember what this is called because it doesn't actually say it on the package, but it's a very good dupe for that Dior one. They sent this to me and I was just immediately drawn to that color, so. It's a nice way to wake this up without taking it back in a warm direction with something like peach, you know? But it does, it just kind of breathes a little bit of life into it. it. Makes all the difference in the world, in my opinion. I also really love the way that NYX pencil cooperated with this eye look. It added something kind of hazy and witchy to it. And I'm really into that. Like, I feel like this color story actually lends itself to a witchy look. More so than I would have guessed before putting these colors on together. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull Divine Rose and Utopian Dream from Pat McGrath and do some swatch comparisons. Okay, so here are the six mattes from the palette. Bottom to top here, Familia, Nurture, Unity, Carpe Diem, Aspiration, and Blackest Black. I wanna go ahead and swatch just the mattes because there's not really much sense in comparing other things to that. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's a great color story and everything, and like I think that is important to consider, but at the same time, I think that like what's worth comparing to other palettes, like a Pat McGrath palette, is going to be something with texture. I wanted to give you all that. I would say, I would overall describe this as 
pretty warm, you know, especially on me, but yeah, pretty warm, which is interesting when you think about the rest of the colors because it does tend to lean so purple and, and actually they're kind of warm purples. <laughs> if you think about it, like a lot of them are kind of like red purples. And here are the textured shades, starting with babies, babies, invention, risk, spontane, no, serenity, spontaneous, uh, edgy, instinct, vision, and thrill. There's a lot of excitement here. There really is. Like these are some incredible textures, incredible colors, and I think they're really interesting choices that she made. Okay, I'm just dipping into Utopian Dream first just to grab the oil slick shade. And then we have Miss Divine Rose One, the Mothership Seven, I believe. Yes. When I got this in my hand, I was like, oh no, they're, <laughs> they're so different. Divine Rose is just so desaturated compared to this. And like, oh boy. Mm. Uh. <laughs> that is the urge I have when we're talking about Pat McGrath palettes, but mainly Divine Rose. So there are like, I feel like those are really worth comparing, right? This is super similar to the idea of Invention, which is the second shade there, but the Pat McGrath one is just more magical to me. It's less apricot. It's easier to wear for me specifically because it's less orange. Not that, you know, that was what she was going for necessarily was to like aim for the Pat McGrath vibe. She has her own vibe, but for me, it's like worth, again, worth comparing. And then obviously the things that really are worth comparing here are like ones that carry the, the actual Divine Rose energy of that very dialed in, desaturated purple, pinky purple. And you can just see, oh my gosh, how desaturated Pat McGrath is by comparison in this particular instance. We're just talking about things that have more gray in them. And just that little bit more gray makes them easier for me to wear. This just ends up looking more artsy. That's not to say you can't get something really toned down from the My Dream palette. It's just, it's not as easy, I feel like. And then you get into like her special shades and everything just starts, you know, you start to see the appeal of Pat McGrath specifically because her textures are just so different. I would say that if like Divine Rose has always been a little bit unappealing to you, like you're this close to buying it, but it's not quite a hell yes for you because maybe you have like a deeper skin tone and you need more richness to the pigments or it just doesn't excite you and you want something that is a little bit more like saturated and artsy and like it, you can you can really push the limits a little bit more maybe the natasha denona one would be better for you i feel like divine rose the original divine rose is mainly appealing because yes it does have those exciting shades and really cool textures in it but the jumping off point is very tame. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense like as either like a six pan or even a quad and then the rest of it is just iterations, theme and variation, just like ways of putting like you know pop and excitement in there whereas I do feel like this is kind of pop and excitement across the board in a lot of ways. Like sure there are your mats to be able to like ground yourself in but a lot of them look more saturated on the skin than they look in the pan and the shades themselves could all be stars of the show in their own right. Okay, I'm gonna go on to, I guess Natasha Denona's website and just read up on what she says about this collection. Nurture de Nurner. I cannot help but say I like that and I'm so sorry. I don't have enough glasses. <laughs> Y'all have heard of dark academia. What about bright chaotic academia? Okay, My Dream Palette, the midi-sized My Dream eyeshadow palette brings together 15 of Natasha's favorite eyeshadows in a captivating constellation of shades inspired by the elements of life that illuminate and intensify her creative vision. Natasha's most loved eyeshadows featuring two of her favorite existing shades and introducing 13 new shades in inspiring finishes and formulas, including a high impact foiled multi-chrome and two dazzling duo chromes that can also be worn as toppers. With cool toned burgundy brown and soft coral mattes offset by bursts of neutral golden nude shimmer and high shine metallics, my dream eyeshadow palette is encased in packaging hand designed by Natasha and featuring her own handwriting. They do a good job of walking through each shade and describing them. You know, I will leave you to go and examine those for yourself. I'm not going to go through all 15 of them. That would be 
boring, but the inspiration, it says, this collection is so close to my heart and every shade in the palette was carefully selected to create this beautiful assortment of colors that truly represents my lifestyle, ideology, and who I am as an artist and creator. Whether she's wearing her signature smoky cat eye or elevated evening glam, my dream palette contains the shades and formulas Natasha loves most woven into an ultra wearable color story anyone can use. From vision and serenity to unity and, and instinct, each shade in the palette is inspired by and named for an aspect of the life she cherishes. My Dream Cheek Trio, $48. A sublime selection of blush and highlighters in Natasha's very first Cheek Trio. These luxe hot, lightweight formulas boost your glow from subtle to stunning in three effortless steps. Cream blush, that's a cream? Oh no, oh no, really? That's not a cream, that's a powder. That's a, this is a powder. I don't know why she says it's a cream. It's very much a powder. <laughs> it's like, am I losing my mind? A new blush formula in shade Natasha, mauve pink nude from the I Need a Nude lipstick collection. This ultra smooth lightweight formula combines advanced gel technology with specialized resin and one stroke creamy coverage with subtle flush finish. I mean, I get this whole like, you know, pressed gel blush, you know, all these hybrid textures and everything where it's kind of like, what is it? But like, it's very much a powder to me. To me, it looks like a leprechaun to me. I wanna see if there's anything special about the specific lip gloss here. The lip gloss was $27. What? Y'all, it's fine, but $27? I feel like so many prices in the makeup world have caught up to Natasha Denona's like previously wild prices. You know, in recent years, we used to think that it was so crazy. And I feel like so many other makeup brands price their stuff like she has always been pricing her stuff that like, I don't blanch really at her prices anymore, but $27 for that lip gloss is like, kind of ridiculous. Using the groundbreaking formula from the I Need a Rose collection, this classic ultra moisturizing gloss is the first to be offered in the best-selling shade Natasha from the I Need a Nude collection. So this is a shade that already existed, except just not in this formula. So I think I can give you all my final thoughts on this now, especially with all of those claims in mind and whatnot. Starting with the eyeshadow palette. It is in some ways what I expected because I am still, I mean, I stand by what I said earlier, right? And I stand by what I said in 2018, right? It's not a beginner friendly formula from the mattes. The other ones are exciting, the textures and everything. And I feel like her textured shadows, those formulas have come a long way. Like I said, when I got the Tropic palette, I was just like, really? The gold palette was when I really started seeing usable, exciting, shimmery textures. But prior to that, they were just really weird. They, they, it's like they hard panned immediately. I don't know. I'm not going to go off on a thing there. These are good. They're really good. It's a like good version of these kinds of eyeshadows. And the color story is, it's pretty much what I hoped it was going to be. I didn't want an exact dupe, obviously, of Divine Rose because like, <laughs> what would be the point? It does have her signature to it, as it were. And they are distinctly Natasha Denona type formulas done in this particularly like, I think a very artistic colorway that can go a lot of different ways. Like you do have things that can stay really like tame and give you something really sultry. And then also a lot of options in terms of like, you know, putting some pop on the lid and getting something exciting that, you know, I don't have anything else in my collection that looks quite like that. But I still am not a hundred percent sold on this formula in terms of my two right? My two parameters. Makeup should be easy and fun. This is fun. It's very fun, but it's not easy. And I do still find myself getting like a little bit exhausted by the mats because once they're on, there's not a lot of workability. The fact that she suggests packing them and then blending them, I'm like, you kind of can't. And you also saw the area of my eyes that this was the first formula that I noticed it on actually back then. The way that it like wants to gap up right here and not stick on my eyes, it still does that. And I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised. I think I expected more so that like my brush is improving and my skills improving that I wouldn't encounter that issue again. But I still had like these sort of like flashbacks because I can't, the way that I can with the Pat McGrath formula, I can't go into a flow state with these. It's not mindless. I need something to feel 
a little bit mindless, something where I can go into a flow state in order for it to feel fun. I need to be able to go into like painter mode. And in order to go into painter mode in my brain, the formulas have to feel pretty effortless. Like they have to do something intuitive where I am able to kind of predict ahead of time, like what this is going to look like and how it's going to manipulate when I touch the brush to my skin or touch my finger to my skin. And these just, kind of work against you sometimes and they stop layering at some point which can drive me insane because I am kind of a fan of I, as far as like putting on eye makeup I'm a big fan of layering I like to be able to use colors to like blend on top of each other cool something off or warm something up in layering instead of using it straight from the pan and that being where I'm kind of limited and there are a lot of formulas that lend themselves to doing that a lot better than this one does to me in my opinion. And I would say that like, you know, I don't typically give a, like a number rating, but I would give this like a seven out of 10. It's not a perfect palette to me. I think the shades are gorgeous. I wish that it had a little bit more variety in terms of some light shades for everyone, okay? Not just because I'm a ghostly pale person, but mainly because I feel like everyone needs light in order to play with shadow and light. There's a lot of shadow here, but just not a lot of light. And like her saying that even the highlighter in the blush palette is universal, it's still a little bit dark and gold for me. And I think that like there could have just been some tweaks made there or maybe like another version of it come out or something like that. So I'm glad that this is her dream. Uh, is it my dream? Is it my utopian dream? It's kind of like if someone blended utopian dream and divine rose together, but in a Natasha Denona formula, not in a Pat McGrath formula. And if I am actually exercising my own personal partiality, my partiality in terms of easy and fun, worth the money, I'm gonna go Pat McGrath. It's, I mean, yes, they're twice the price, but I feel like you're going to get something easier to use that you're going to use more often. Whereas while I enjoy this, it's just a little intimidating, even from someone who's been doing this for a minute. You know what I mean? Like I don't consider myself to be incredibly skilled at this and I do like things to be a little bit mindless and that can often sell a formula short because I do kind of wanna be able to chill while I'm doing my makeup kind of thing. Like if you're someone who likes precision, you know, maybe, and on a wet brush, probably. But you know, if you were kind of thinking that this was going to be both easy and fun, it really is just fun, not particularly easy. I wish that this one had the like pop out, it doesn't have the pinholes in the back where you can pop these out, I'm sure you still can, but I pretty much would have bought this blush alone. I don't know why this needed to be a trio. These are not useful. Like why could it not be a blush trio with like three different colors of blush or a blush, a highlighter and a bronzer, or two blushes and a highlighter? Why did we stick this cream in the middle? I don't understand. It just doesn't, it, there's nothing like about this, the composition of it, the arrangement of it, the decisions here that makes me think absolutely home run, go spend your money on it. No. Besides, this color does exist elsewhere. It's a very pretty color, it is. I just wish that it existed in its own pan because this is two thirds silly. And while I, Love this shade and I've been using it every day since I got it. $27? $27? That's kind of a lot for this. I mean, it's in plastic. It doesn't, it feels kind of like, just like a light, it's kind of like drugstore packaged. I'm gonna be honest. Like it doesn't feel like Victoria Beckham Beauty where at least it's in glass or like it has that like really, really thick, gorgeous glassy look to it. No, it's just very lightweight. It's pretty, it's a nice color, it smells good. But if you blindfolded me and told me this was Maybelline, I would believe you. <laughs> From start to finish, the packaging, the experience, the formula, the smell, everything. Nothing about this feels luxurious to me. It's just a nice color. Nice colors exist lots of places. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's kind of like when you're dating more than one person, right? <laughs> Together they all make the perfect person, the perfect mate, but you wouldn't pick an individual one of them to keep forever. I don't know, that's kind of how I feel about this. Like, I like the palette. I think the palette is a complete thought, even if it's not 100% um, my dream. This feels overpriced, but a good color. This feels like a total afterthought, and I'm really, I'm really sorry, but it does. Like, I, I just, I'm very disappointed here at just all the decisions that were made. I don't get it. Looking at this eye look right now, I'm very just like, yikes, you know? It's, it looks skippy. I kind of hung, I white knuckled my way through it. I hung up by the skin of my teeth. It's not a perfect, 
formula. It's not super fun to use. If it were my advice to my friends, you know, I would say save your money, wait for a sale and go for Pat McGrath. <laughs> It's just more exciting and it's more worth your money and it's a lot more fun to use. So I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, you should subscribe. We have a lot of fun on this channel. I review tons and tons and tons of makeup and I give you my honest reviews on them as to whether they are fun and easy to use. Those are my two main parameters. And I wanna thank y'all for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.